Welcome, and thanks for joining my presentation today. My name is Michael Deisler, and I'll be presenting work that I did together with Pedro Gonzalez and Jakob Macke on analyzing the metabolic cost of neuronal networks that produce similar activity. A ubiquitous feature in many neural systems is parameter degeneracy. This means that a specific target activity, for example those three spikes, can be produced not just by a specific combination of parameters, for example a specific combination of sodium and potassium conductances, but in fact by an entire range of parameters. This parameter degeneracy has been observed both theoretically and experimentally and is believed to underlie the robustness of neural systems to perturbations. However, the parameters of neural systems are likely not only constrained by the target activity, but also by other factors such as metabolic cost. Now, in order to understand the experimentally observed parameter variability, it is important to understand how it is influenced by additional constraints such as energy consumption. In this study, we investigated the metabolic cost of parameter configurations with similar activity. Specifically, we were interested not just in single neurons, but in networks, and whether the metabolic cost can differ despite similar network activity. To study this, we returned to a seminal model in neuroscience, namely the pyloric network in the crab and lobster. We used a model consisting of three model neurons, each of Hodgkin and Huxley type and with eight membrane conductance each, interconnected by seven synapses. In this model, it is known that one can produce or that it can produce virtually the same activity despite having very differently, very different membrane and synaptic conductances. We then computed the energy consumption of two such network configurations which have different parameters but similar activity. And we found that both the total energy consumption on the left-hand side, as well as the moment-by-moment -moment energy consumption, can strongly differ between them. When zooming into these plots, we found that one can obtain virtually indistinguishable voltage traces, even though the energy consumption can differ. We then wondered whether this observation still holds when we enforce that the model, act that the model activity precisely matches experimental data, but also whether we could identify even more parameter sets whose metabolic cost might differ even more than just the two shown parameter sets. To do so, we wanted to identify all parameter configurations that are consistent with experimentally observed data. However, identifying the entire space of data compatible parameters is challenging. And we, recently over, and we recently introduced a tool that is based on deep neural networks to address this challenge. We applied the method we introduced to the pyloric network in the crab, and we, therefore, and we thereby obtained a distribution over all membrane and synaptic conductances, in total 31 parameters, which can all reproduce experimental data. The figure shows a histogram and pairwise histograms of four of the 31 total of the total four, 31 parameters, and as expected, the histograms cover wide ranges of conductances, showing that the experimentally observed activity can indeed be produced by diverse sets of membrane and synaptic conductances. We then use this distribution to compute the energy consumption of 30, 36,000 parameter configurations. The figure shows a histogram over these energy consumptions, and as you can see, the most efficient circuit configuration and the most wasteful circuit configuration differ by an order of magnitude in their energy consumption. We then set out to analyze this behavior and to understand where this that disparity in energy consumption comes from. And I'm just going to give you a quick glimpse at our main results now. First of all, we found that energy efficiency does constrain some parameters, but nonetheless, there remains variability. Secondly, we showed that circuit parameters influence energy consumption in an almost linear way, and this allows us to show how strongly a specific parameter influences energy. We then identify a trade-off between the energy per spike and the number of spikes. And lastly, we show that being robust to temperature increases does not entail additional metabolic cost. 
I'd like to thank Pedro Gonzalez and Jakob Macke for being fantastic colleagues and supervisors. And I'd like to thank Sarah Haddad and Yves Marder for sharing the data. Several of our lab members for working together on the Bayesian inference tools I showed here and um, giving, giving feedback on the presentation. And I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you.